All right. Rolling, rolling, rolling. All right, great. All right. Uh, hi, Commissioner Jarda here again. Um, and we wanted to talk a little bit about trans visibility in regards to education. Um, for me, what that means um, is education regards to just for everybody in general. Um, you know, but as I mentioned earlier, you know, I am a teacher. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher and uh, I think it's important to educate people of all ages. Um, I have often, what made me stay in the closet, so to speak, longer is because there was this correlation between being queer and being a pervert, basically. Can we say that? Um, well, you said, well. <laughs> mm, oh well. Well. <laughs> and, um. The stigma is out there, though. Right, That's the stigma is out there, and it's very strange. I'm not sure why or how that came about. I, I, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole, but I think, um. I have had parents, I've had people, even people in my own family who would say things like, oh, well, the kids are too young, or don't tell the kids, you know, it's not a topic to talk about. And it always baffled me because I, first of all, I've had students who have parents who are queer. <laughs> so, I mean, they're <laughs> born into this life and they're walking around the house seeing a queer couple all the time. How is that inappropriate? Um, so that always baffled me. And um, two, why... Is it okay for heterosexual couples to be openly in relationships and be around children and that not be weird? Yeah, no, how, can, how can that be accepted norm? Huh? Yeah, and um, <laughs> I think in education as well, we, I mean, we need more trans writers and more books about trans uh, people written by trans people. And I want to stress written by trans people. <laughs> and um, yes. that would be helpful, but I, I do want to get away because even, um, you know, we have the whole, there was back. People were upset about sex ed in general. You know, when should children learn about sexuality? Well, you know, the, the moment they ask, because we're born with it. It's yeah, exactly. not something that just turns on. No, later. there's no switch. Um, right. Hey, you, know, you know, here's a light, boom, it you happened know, one day, no. I knew I felt different as the moment I could think. I didn't have the words, I didn't have the language, I didn't have the vocabulary, I didn't have the support. Um, there was nothing in my outside world that could even direct me to what I was feeling. I think the first time I even knew of another queer person or gay person was when Ellen came out and the immediate backlash. My mom watched this show religiously, stopped watching. Everyone I knew stopped watching Ellen and it was just a thing. So that's my first experience. I'm what, maybe in sixth grade, so about 11. What do you think that said to me? It affirmed what I always kind of knew that I was different and it was not okay. But this made it clear, like, this was not okay, you will lose your job, you will lose your respect, people are not going to like you anymore, and they're going to treat you differently. And it was so visceral, I was like, hey, we, the whole world, watch it. I mean, I got my own opinion about Ellen now, but that's neither here nor there. But I can see, you know, the, the reports of her being mean, I can guess why. <laughs> I mean, an yeah. entire country said, we don't want you because you happen to like women. And most of the people saying that like women as well. They're men. You like women. Why are you surprised that someone like a woman? <laughs> no, like, Why is that shocking to you? <laughs> like, <laughs> and here's our long lost fact about the Ellen Show. By the way, I'm Commissioner Repsack again. Uh -huh. uh, the actress, the other actress in that scene <laughs> is Laura Dern. She was in the, I believe she was in. Oh, yes. Uh, the movie with the uh, dinosaurs. Uh, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, yes, yes. 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 She the was blonde a, woman. She was a woman when Ellen, when Ellen yes. came out on her mm -hmm. show. But today, that's our today's useless fact. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you know, and I, I think I was young, I didn't really understand, but what I did understand that it was not okay. And that's the sort of trans visibility we don't want. I can't tell you how many times I hear jokes, and I get it. You can tell a trans joke. But let's call it what it is. It's a homophobic joke. That's what it is. Right. Yes. And that's all I want. You know, if someone tells a homophobic joke, I'm going to name that. I don't like homophobic jokes. They're not funny. No. Um, there are racist jokes. There are knock knock that's jokes. Not, there that's are not riddles. funny either. Yeah, yeah there are riddles. Not. There are tongue teasers. There are tongue twisters. Um, there are what am I jokes. There's racist jokes. There are all kinds of jokes. And I, what I can't stand when people will say something hurtful. And when uh, the person who's hurt by that statement will say, oh, it's just a joke. Yes, I heard the joke. The joke was insensitive. <laughs> it was a homophobic joke. Just naming that. Um, and people 
who are just really dedicated to not making safe spaces, I, I don't understand. No one's asking you to be PC. We're asking you to be a human being. We're asking you to think about what you're saying and what that implies to the younger generation around us and the older generation too. You're literally making a place and telling someone without, you don't know, most people don't even know I'm trans. I've heard many, many homophobic statements about trans people sitting in a room with people who don't even know they're sitting next to a trans person. And trans visibility, I am not saying that there are some trans folks that who, who honestly don't ever want to be associated with the gender they were born in. I'm not that trans person. I'm happy to be misgendered all the time. It doesn't bother me. But for some folks, it is. And trans visibility isn't about making us shout out, I'm trans! No. It's the idea that everyone should just assume that there's a trans person in the room. <laughs> well, better yet, how can we just be regular folks? You're a man, I'm yeah, a woman. Yeah, exactly. How's that? You never know. Remember they say, a trans man's a man. Right. A trans a woman is a woman. woman. Right. Plain and simple. simple. That's that. Um, I, I had, I've heard a gay person say that they should take a T at a GLBTQIA+, because now you're a, a man or a woman, so you're not gay or queer anymore. Is that, what kind of logic all right, you wanna, is this? My alright, y'all want to sound good. We're both going on our own. We have our own You know, and there's some trans folks who would, who do not go to gay events. They don't go to these events because they do see themselves in the heterosexual community, and they stay there, and that is fine. That is all fine, and I'm not. I, I don't want folks to think that but, I think transmissibility means that we all need a shot from the. No, we don't need a shot from the top. But with the visibility, there will be less of this idea of folks thinking we don't exist <laughs> and not being cognizant of who's in the room. I've had folks say, "Oh, I've never met a trans woman before." I'm like, "How do you know? How I do tell, you know that?" <laughs> I tell people, you, "You know, you know, you you know someone trans in your life. The problem is, they're." They haven't come out yet. They're afraid to come out. That's why you yeah. haven't met them. Either because. they're afraid to come out, they haven't come out, and or they're living their lives of themselves and don't. they don't want to take on the emotional burden of having yes. to educate people every day. I do it because I'm already a teacher, but it does get tiring. I've had moments where people ask me questions about being trans, and I'm not, I'm not in the mood. Go Google it. <laughs> you know, I don't have time to educate you and to be just a normal human being and not ask inappropriate questions. Like, think about how you interact with other folks. Do you ask them these things? The absurd questions that I get from folks who want to know about trans people has nothing to do with getting to know me. It's, it's a... It's, it's, it's bizarre. It's nothing helpful, usually, the questions that are asked. Say, so, let's say a house, you have mortgage to pay, bills to pay, right? Mm -hmm. Raise yep, a yep. family. It doesn't sound like everyone... It just sounds pretty common for you yeah, know, our country, right? But... I um, can't just let it be. Mm -hmm. And I, I like... I, I want there to be more trans education. And not education in the sense that where some exhibit or, you know, thing that needs to be studied. Um, and I, I had that feeling a lot, and I, and I don't like that feeling of being other to the point where we're almost like an alien. We need to be or dissected like, what's wrong. Or like we're put on display you know? and yeah. media puts us on display mm -hmm. and we're... I, I came we're out wrong. about 11 years ago, and in Connecticut at the time, um, the laws were not great. <laughs> we had to go through a year's worth of therapy, and it cost a lot of money. The access, the access, the access. I'm lucky. I grew up with money. I grew up with parents who could provide for me, parents with good jobs. Even when I did transition, though they had their own that uh, own issue they had to work out with, you know, I wasn't kicked out. Wasn't, you know, really treated differently. You know, it was a different kind of non-interaction with my sexuality and whatnot, but I, it was very difficult to get approved in Connecticut. I went to New York, in wow. fact, because their, their um, guidelines were much more, um, they weren't as restrictive. In Connecticut, it really felt like I had to say I was crazy or mentally unfit to be a woman in order to get what I needed, which was hormones, <sighs> and being able to get access to be able to have my own top surgery. And lots of, you know, you go get any plastic surgery or elective surgery, they ask you questions, they make you make sure that you're, you know, want to do this to yourself and etc. And I understand that, but um, I did find the therapy, the, the mandated therapy was very intrusive and um, unfair, especially for adults. I'm a grown person, I shouldn't have to as far as that W path regulations too, yes, how yeah. many how many letters you need? Right. And I know some people had to have a letter from psychologists for a year just yeah. in order to start HRT. Yes, exactly, and that was very. It's mind boggling. And then they need another letters. 
when and if surgery day comes, yes, and when exactly. they want to have many, many letters, and um, but yet a cis person, they want to have something done to their body. They just go. They go make the appointment. They'll check with the insurance. Yeah, no yeah. woman has to go. Uh, a female that wants to have a breast reduction or breast. Um, What's it called? Implants? I don't think they're mandated. Breast to augmentation? No, they don't need to. Well, let's think on that. They don't don't, don't yeah. put us on that, but yeah, I've well, never ever heard a woman have to tell me they had to go to therapy for a year prior to getting. They don't need two letters from psychiatrists. Yeah, they don't need two letters from psychiatrists or psychologists. They don't have to deal with the WPATH regulations. Yeah, on and that just feels um, really unfair. And, um, and I, you know, I was a little bit more vocal with my sexuality. As a young child, but I was always told I didn't know. I'm in a phase. You don't know what you're talking about. And in my mind, I'm like, but I'm. But here, you know. I'm in my head. I can but hear what I'm thinking. You knew. <laughs> Why is everyone so? I knew yeah. as a kid, but I was afraid to say anything because no one else. Yeah. That's the fear. Trans visibility, I think it would eliminate fear of just being comfortable. 